Welcome. So this is a video on the two-hand tapping technique. Two-hand tapping arpeggios in particular. Now before we go any further, you need to make sure that your string muting is absolutely perfect. So that's fretting hand muting and picking hand muting. You don't want any unwanted string noise. So if you're unsure about that, check out this video that I made before we go any further. Now if you've seen that and you're ready to proceed, let's begin with a single string tapping recap. And after that, we'll go into an absolutely awful sounding but incredibly effective exercise called the seesaw exercise. Now that'll clean up your string crosses and will enable you for the third thing we're going to do which is uh, two string tapped arpeggios and in particular it's going to be a diminished two string tapped arpeggio just because the fingering is uh, nice and symmetrical and easy to, easy to remember. And then uh, at the very end I'll just link you to some of my favorite tapping licks that I've made. Well I hope you enjoy. Remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so hopefully you've seen that video on string muting now, and you understand that you need to do fretting hand muting and picking hand muting in order to get clean notes sounding out. So let's do a bit of a single string recap before we get into the arpeggio shape. So you're going to want to put your, uh, your index finger on the 10th fret of the G string, and the B and the E strings are going to be muted under the flesh of your index finger. Now the D, the A, and the E strings are going to be muted under your picking hand. And the only string that we're going to be tapping on is the G string. Now with your middle finger, tap onto the 16th fret of the G string. And then you pull off to the 13th, 13th fret, and then pull off to the 10th fret and then hammer onto the 13th and then tap onto the 16th. Now just loop that over and over again and then we'll move on to the string crossing exercise and beyond. Single string tapping is easy enough. It's not until you start to cross over strings that you will encounter difficulty. So I came up with a string crossing exercise to help you with this. So it'll enable multi-string tapping playing. What you're going to want to do is do that tap note on the 16 as we are doing before. And you're going to want to do a hammer on from nowhere onto the 10th fret of the high E. That's simply where you just hammer on. It's like a tap note but with your fretting hand. And now I call this the seesaw exercise because you just go back and forth between two notes. And it's incredibly annoying, but incredibly effective. Now the trick here is, as you go to play the second note, the moment you hammer on from nowhere, you, you know, gently unfret and then release the tap note. And then, in order to come back, it's just the same the other way around. So you're playing the 10th fret, and you release it, you unfret it, as soon as you do the tap note. Now you just want to do this back and forth, making sure that you can cross uh, strings with the tapping technique easily and cleanly. Make sure those note transitions are absolutely perfect. Don't go too quickly with this one, because you wouldn't normally encounter this kind of maneuver over and over again in playing. But you know, definitely play through and get it sounding strong. So now we're going to be moving on to the full shape. This is a diminished tapped arpeggio. Now the reason I chose the diminished tapped arpeggio is because it's really easy to remember. It's nice uh, symmetrical patterns. It's always just index finger, pinky, tap note, 
same fret numbers, all of that. So, let's get started. How do you do this? Well, we're going to start off with the original single string tapping thing, which was the 16, 13, and the 10. But when we get to that 16, we're going to do that string cross that we practice in the string crossing exercise. Now, once we're successfully on to this E string, you're going to want to move up your picking hand mute just slightly to keep the G string and the B string quiet now that you're playing on the high E. Um, from here, it's just... Uh, you know, the hammer-on from nowhere, as we did. Then, with the pinky, you tap onto the 13th fret of the high E. And now, the final note is a 16, uh, yeah, a 16 on the high E. Now, you can use this middle finger to tap, like we've been doing. Or, what I like to do is I use my, uh, what's this one, the fourth finger here. Uh, to do the tap on the high E. I find it a bit more ergonomic to do it that way. So it's you know the middle finger on the on the G string. And then the fourth finger um, on the high E. That's just the way that I do it. And then to come back, you simply uh, pull off that note, like a tapped pull off to the pinky there. Ordinary pull off to the index. And then you do that string crossing exercise again to return to this tap note on the 16th fret of the G string. Pull off, uh, pull off to the 30, and pull off to the 10. And there is your uh, two string diminished tapped arpeggio. Hey guys, I really hope you got something out of this video, and I hope it wasn't too boring. These technical videos do tend to be a bit dull but I really hope that it paid off. Anyway, I'll make up for it now. Check out these awesome looks.